Welcome, uh, Fellowship Asheville, to our Convo Cast, where we hope to inspire you with stories of what God is doing in and through the people here at Fellowship Asheville. And we have got another bonus episode uh, for you in uh, the uh, series of kind of getting to know more people at Fellowship. Uh, we have we have hijacked it a little bit for the elder process. The last one that you saw was with Andrew as a process of get to in the eldering nomination process so you could get to know him and today uh we have jared spencer that's also in that eldering nomination process and so so before we get into the questions to get to know jared i want to tell you a little bit about the process we are an elder uh, led church. We have elder overseers. They uh, obviously don't do the day-to-day -day operations of the church. Uh, they are overseers, and, and elders as overseers um, deal with, with four main areas of leadership. They deal with the doctrine of the church. They deal with the direction of the church. They deal with discipline issues of the church, Matthew 18, if they if, if, if issues rise up to the elder level. Um, and then they deal with just discernment issues in the church. Um, we have prayed for people for healing. We have, we have had people come to the elders when they're just kind of stuck in life and need some discernment. And so, so all of that is part of what the, the elders do. Um, and as far as fellowship goes, I am the only staff person that's an elder as a lead pastor. As the lead pastor, I get to be an elder. Um, but uh, the rest of the, the guys as elders are like Jared. They have uh, full-time jobs elsewhere. Um, they are lay elders, and, and so there is this nomination process for them to become elders, and, and it is a very long process at times, um, it, it kind of long intentionally, because what happens is someone nominates a person to be an elder, um, the elders uh, see if they believe that that person is in line with the, what the Bible lays out as, as qualifications for an elder. Uh, and if if the current elder team says, yeah, let's enter this person to the nomination process, um, we meet with that person. An elder meets with that person and gives them a little book. I wonder if I have a copy of it. Oh, yeah, I do. OK, so we give them this little book, Church Elders. Notice the thickness of it. It is very thin. We have another book that's like 400 pages. Uh, we used to give that one. So the, the, this round of elders uh, is is pretty lucky. They get the, the the short one, but it is packed and it is dense. And it still does what we hope it does. And it gives uh, people, the men that are in this elderly nomination process, a view of what it means to be an elder. And typically, I think I think it did this for you too, Jerry. Typically, it scares them a little bit, uh, and so which is which is the right response. You don't want somebody to go, "Yeah, I got this." Um, you want them to go, "Wow, this is this is a lot, and it's a lot more than than we thought of." And then and then uh, they take their time to read, to pray, to discern with their family: Is this God's will to to become an elder? Um, there's an interview with the entire elder team, with the person and their wife to ask questions really is the big part of it. And for the elders to ask them questions. And then the final step is uh, once the elders are, are, are unanimous and that this person uh, should continue on in the eldering nomination process, it's where the church comes in. And one of the biblical um, uh, mandates for an elder is that they have a good reputation. And so the only way for us to discern that is to uh, put the elder nominee up in front of the congregation and say, hey, y'all tell us uh, what you know about this guy. Um, do you think he is 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 worthy of being an overseer? Is, is, is he walking in faith and trust with Jesus uh, to be able to do that, to help you get to know Jared. That's why we do these convo casts. And so so with all of that, so, so Jared, you are in this last stage of the elder nomination process where the church uh, gets to kind of weigh in on your reputation. And so I want to give them an opportunity to, to the congregation to get to know you. So, so church, this is Jared Spencer. Uh, Jared, tell us a little bit about who you are. Thanks, Fred. Um, so yeah, my name is Jared Spencer. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my profession and, and family. So um, I am uh, associate professor of chemistry and physics at Montreat College. Uh, if you don't know Montreat's tiny little town, tiny little school that's north of Black Mountain. So 
uh, you know, 20 minutes outside of Asheville or so. Um, my, uh, I'm, I am married, my wife, Hope, and, uh, and I have three children, um, Luke, Jacob, and Molly. Uh, Luke and Jacob are both in college. Um, Luke is at Montreat. He's, he's finishing up his senior year at Montreat. Um, and Jacob is at Milligan. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jacob is at Milligan. Um, when did that uh, happen? Uh, he's, he's, uh, in his, uh, junior year there. So, um, now Molly's a, a fresh, uh, excuse me, a sophomore at uh, ACA, uh, Asheville Christian. So um, we've been in the Asheville area for for seven years. Well, well, this is my seventh year teaching at Montreal College. So we've we've been here a little over six years, uh, working on our seventh year. Um, uh, we uh, are. I'm I'm originally from from Virginia, um, from Roanoke. Uh, and Hope's originally from West Virginia, from the Athens area, Princeton area of West, West Virginia. And uh, we were at Blacksburg uh, at Virginia Tech for many, many years. Um, and that's where I, I did my graduate work. And uh, when uh, when I was stopping teaching at Virginia Tech, we were kind of looking at different places uh, and asking the Lord where, where, where he wanted us. And I was looking for a teaching position, but I wanted it to be at a, at a Christ-centered school, and and that's what Montreat is. We're we're a Christ-centered liberal arts school. So, um, yeah, that's that's how we ended up in the Asheville area, uh, and we ended up at Fellowship. Um, uh, we we uh, at, here at Montreat, there's a church that meets a uh, uh, Christ community, and uh, we were here uh, when we were renting in Montreat the first, I don't know, six months or so that that we lived here. Uh, but when we when we were able to finally purchase a house. Um, uh, we started, we, 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 we liked Christ's community, but we knew that God wasn't calling us there. I mean, it was just one of those things. It's like, well, this, this is great for the, for this season, but, but we need to find a home church. Um, and so fellowship was the second church that we visited. And it was kind of like, as soon as we, as soon as we finished that first Sunday morning, uh, Hope and I were like, this is, we think this is it. Um, we mm -hmm. think this, just, we, we independently, but at the same time, and, and that sort of, uh, that's sort of our teamwork. Um, you know, it's it's been it's been the case that that we feel that God is has always told us uh, together what what He wants us to do. So we've we've never had this sort of um, well hope things that that maybe the Lord's leading me to do one thing, and I think that the Lord's leading me to do something some something completely different. It's always we've always been in sync with the uh, with that. So that's that's, that's a little great. bit about me and 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 my family. Okay, what's something that most folks don't know about you? <laughs> okay, so there are, there are a couple of things that came that that come to mind. Um, uh, I, I'm a, a a bona fide YouTube star. Um, <laughs> I, I what, posted a video that has over half a million views on YouTube. Um, what video is that? <laughs> it is the most boring video with that many views in the history of YouTube. When I was teaching it. <laughs> When I was teaching at Virginia Tech, I uh, I was teaching a physical chemistry lab, and uh, and I needed to show the students how to use Microsoft Excel to do some analysis of some of their data, uh, and so I just made a little video and sent it to them. It's about a hundred students or so, and uh, and every every six months or so, I, I go and look at that video just to see what it is, and it's like at five hundred and fifty thousand views or something like that. Now it's completely it, it's it's silly. It's very very silly because. Uh, I'm assuming that there were just lots and lots of university students across the world that needed help with this particular aspect of using Excel. And, uh, and I happened to name it the right thing or something like that. So it's, it's kind of funny. YouTube has never made uh, any offers to, 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 to spoil well, financially because of that video, but <laughs> that's a shame. But, uh, me either. Me either. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then the other thing is, uh, which, uh, is probably not surprising to people that, that, that know me, but we, we did the, uh, Ancestry 23andMe test out of whichever one it is that that uh -huh. you send your DNA to the government and uh, and let them tell you where you're from and apparently and make clones of you and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah go apparently ahead. I am uh, uh, I have uh, uh, more Neanderthal blood than 85 percent of humans. So I'm part caveman. That seems to be the. <laughs> I didn't even know that was an my, option. My wife was completely unsurprised when that came back. So that's uh that's that's Neanderthal else. is an option. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's uh they, they tell you they'll tell you what what, what percentage Neanderthal you are, I I, I suppose. So <laughs> I am blown I away. I'll right tell now. you what I haven't done. I haven't eaten any double grubs. So that's that's uh that's that's I mean 
Never say never. So unlike never. Andrew, I've not eaten any guinea guinea pigs or or, or grubs. That wow, try to this back, is so, true. But... This is true. Wow, <laughs> the end of wow. Okay, I don't even know where to go from there. Um, yeah, I don't know either. I, did, is... I didn't. I didn't like. I, I, I. Wow. Okay. All right. We'll just leave that there. The end of. <laughs> hey, like I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm literally. Blown, the, I'm trying to me. wrap my head around. Like I did. I, I really had no idea that was an option. Like. The I Netherlands, I would understand. Or just the Northern yeah. European descent yeah. Yeah. Than, yeah. than anything yeah. else. But, but Neanderthal. Uh... Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's just move on. Wow. That's okay. So you might be the most um mind blowing something folks don't know about you answers that that <laughs> I mean, because we went from boring Excel to Neanderthal in like yeah, 15 yeah, seconds. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, so you're in the process of uh, the final process of being part of this elder nomination process uh, where the church gets to weigh in. Um, it, talk a little bit about how God led you to say yes to serving in the church this way. So, um, you know, as uh, one of the things that that has really pressed upon me since joining fellowship and and this is partly because it's such an emphasis for fellowship is 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 the idea of service um and so i've i've been looking for ways to plug into the church for some time um at, at first it was you know m- my family and i are are extremely inter- introverted so the at first it was like what can we do behind the scenes to to kind of help and you know during covid we we did we did some of the cleaning in the church and um mm-hmm. Some people may be familiar with with uh, myself and my sons because we we do some of the waving and greeting uh, on on Sunday mornings, um, and so th- those were some places that I, I, I had plugged in, um, and then I had plugged in uh, into a small group, and uh, Hope and I had the uh, the the blessing to to lead a small group for a couple of years, and um, and so I I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed. I didn't think I would because again introverted, but uh, but. That that was just a, a a wonderful experience in getting to know uh, the other people in, in that in those group and 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 um, having uh, close Christian friends and um, that that season sort of passed with some of the things that I had to, some mm-hmm. of the extra responsibilities I had to take on at the school that that was at, at the time I, I we ended up having to uh, to uh, to not do that anymore and I was looking for for something else that that I could plug into the to the church and. Uh, and so I had actually considered approaching the elder team and asking if if we needed any help with uh, with the deacons. Um, uh, and and I was like, is this what is this what God wants me to do? And I, I wasn't really sure, but I was like, I, I think I'll probably go talk to to some of them and see what's happening. Uh, and literally within probably a, about a day of making that decision that I was going to come talk to you guys, um, uh, Jared uh, Jared Butner contacted me and said, um, Hey, it's uh, Jared, uh, just wanted to let you know that el- the elders would, would, would uh, well, I would like to talk with you about something having to do with the elders. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I, you know, it was like either something, something bad has happened or, uh, or, they're, or they're going to tell me, they're, they're going to ask me something about being uh, potentially becoming an elder, which was a shock. I, I had no, in, mm. no inclination whatsoever towards, towards eldership, um, I just, uh, you know, uh, I grew up as Southern Baptist, as probably many did here. Um, we didn't have elders, but we did have a deacon board, which functioned a lot like an elder team. Um, my dad was was uh, a deacon for many years in in the churches that I grew up in, so I kind of had this idea of eldership um, and sort of that in uh, familiarly. But it was not something I ever thought of really for myself. So um, when when Jared came and said something to me about it, I said, "I okay, let's let's see let's see where this goes." And uh, you know, I told I told Hope, and she was like, "All right, let's let's at least uh, at least hear them out and see see where where things go." And then it was the book, and that's basically how we we got into the process. But I really felt like the Lord was calling me to serve somehow. Um, again, I, I had no no idea that that it would be going through this process of of potentially being an elder, um, and that's still in the Lord's hand whether whether that happens or not. Um, but uh, but at least at least I I felt like the door opened at the same time that I was being called, um, yeah. and that was was uh, affirming for for me. 
Yeah. Yeah. What had there been any surprises along the way? I mean, besides the initial phone call, any any surprises? So so I think the surprise for me is I I had known from from uh past uh, candidates uh, for eldership that the process was long. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I knew that, that it could be up to a year. Um, we started uh, back at, I think in January of this year mm -hmm. with me. Um, what I was a little surprised at was uh, how patient uh, the elder team is. Um, you know, it, you know it, when, when I had in my, I guess I had in my head this idea, well, it takes about a year of, of, of we're going to do this, 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 you're going to have to. So, and, and, and it's been more along the lines of, all right, take your time. Uh, go through a season of prayer um, and 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 work through the idea yourself. Read through the book. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact us. And and I did. I certainly sat down mm -hmm. with, with a couple of elders and and uh, had had meals and and went over some things. Um, but there was it was never like uh, it was never like there was never any sort of hey Jared are you have you are you are you ready to to move on to the next part which which so that that patience. Uh, um, and, and letting Hope and I work through um, how, we, how we felt about it and what we felt the Lord was, was directing us to do. Um, yeah, I was, I was a little surprised there. I, I guess yeah. I, my, my personality is once I decide that, that something needs to be done, I typically, you know, it's like, okay, let's just get this done. <laughs> so so, yeah. uh, so uh, forcing myself to be patient through the process and, and really spend some time listening to to what God has to say um, was surprising and uh, surprising in a good way. Um, yeah. It was, it was something that, uh, that has, has uh, helped this be a peaceful process as opposed to a, a stressful one. So. Yeah. As, as elders, one of the many things we've learned in, in eldering a church is that um, time is one of God's greatest resources and when we allow God to work in time, like good things happen. And, and, and like you said, like it gave you all time to, to sort through what you were thinking and feeling and, and, and needed to sort through to be able to continue on in the process. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you see that as patience and not passivity because it is, it is patience. We've, we've learned to, to just give people the time they need. Um, as you've been here at Fellowship, yeah, you've served in different areas. You've served on the, you know, the, the you've been waving and and you all, you and and um, one of your sons serve on the sound team. You've served in in group leadership. You've served here at the church. Um, in in your time at Fellowship as a as a whole, like what have you enjoyed most about your time here? Okay, so. Uh... So obviously, the, the the thing that that jumps out to me the most was that Luke, my oldest, um, made made a public profession of faith and was baptized. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously the the thing that that jumps mm -hmm. out to me the most, um, as 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 uh, the most memorable and happiest thing that that's hap that happened uh, that's happened while while I've been here. But um, also, uh, honestly, the the small group stuff. So you know, mm -hmm. for anyone watching this, um, if you haven't joined a small group, I, if you're an introvert and you're like, oh, that's, I just don't think that that's for me. I, you really, really need to. Um, I mean, I, I, what is our saying, Fred? Uh, uh, discipleship learning uh, happens uh, better in circles than in, in mm -hmm. line. Um, uh, I'm in rows, yeah, yeah. In rows, yeah. yeah. And, um, and you know, when Hope and I first joined, I mean, again, we're, we're painfully introverted. So it was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I, if I really want to, you know, be close to these people and of course we were in a group where the group leaders were uh were were extroverted and and really emotional you know talking about feelings and that kind of stuff but <laughs> you know, being able to being able to open up and share some of of, of past history and trauma yeah. and, and that kind of stuff uh and really get close with with a group of people and that group of people has changed from time to time Mm -hmm. um was was just a a, a a wonderful experience and then uh and that of course led into actually leading some of the small groups and there was there we were again we were like oh having to to, to sort of guide and direct one of these things where you know it's it's a big difference between you know just being a part of it and sort of, of being a leader in it and uh and that was again it was just a, a 
just a, a great experience for us. Um, mm -hmm. and, and getting to, to, um, work with people through difficult phases of, the, of their lives and just spend time with them and pray with them and, 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 and go through scripture with them. It's that's, uh, yeah, the small groups are, again. Cool. If, if if any of you are not in the small groups, really, it's you know we're starting up next week. So, um, mm -hmm. I I strongly encourage that. It's uh, it's just a, it's just a great experience, and it and it really deepens connection to people, and it deepens connection yeah. to God. So yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so little little side tangent here, real quick, uh, before we shut down. Um, in knowing you over the the past few years when did y'all start coming were we at the y when y'all started coming no i think uh, we, we you were not we, we were, were here in the, the building y. okay uh, we were here okay. in the building but i think it had only been for a few months um okay it, so like 2017 so it's so it's yeah. been what five, four or five years um i've seen your clothing style change over the past particularly in the past couple of years to a more kind of heritage style clothing i this has nothing to do with anything other than my curiosity i Tell me about that, that so, why gravitate there, why the transition and all that. So it, it actually does have something to do with this. Uh, last year in small groups, we went through uh, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Uh -huh. And uh, uh -huh. one of the things that he talked about in that book was, was um, commercialism and uh, sort of minimalism when it comes to wardrobe and that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not quite ready to only have two outfits that I, you know, rotate every day for, for the rest of my life. But, uh, you know, one of the things he he talked about, and it has always struck a chord with me is sort of getting away from things, whatever they happen to be mm. that are, are sort of use and throw away consumables. Um, and so, uh, you know, as I was thinking about sort of paring down, um, I was had gone through some weight loss. And so I was needing to get new clothing at the time anyway. Um, I was looking for things that uh, were really well made um, uh, and would last a long time as as opposed to to being something that would just wear out very quickly. And it turns out that uh, a lot of that kind of, of clothing is is more heritage style clothing um, because textile mills and things like that over the last 30 or 40 years have their their emphasis has been on making money at the smallest possible cost, mm -hmm. you know, cheapest things, right. um, biggest markups, that kind of stuff. So. Um, so that was one of the reasons. Another reason is uh, I'm fascinated with the the time frame from the from say 1890 to 1940 from a professional standpoint. That's a a place where where hmm. the science has really changed. You know the hmm. the kind of story of all the textbooks had to be rewritten. That's the, what was literally true wow. of that time period. Is all the textbooks had to be rewritten. So uh, I and then. I just think that the style's better <laughs> than, than, than what yeah. than what we than what we have now. So it's kind of a confluence of of those things, um, uh, uh, finding things that are, are are less likely to just be trash in in a year, yeah. and 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 then just enjoying that that period of history. I I also collect like cast iron and some other things that from from that from that time. Oh period. yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a period of time that's always fascinated me and. Uh, yeah. And I guess that's, I guess w when you start to really like something, you start to dress like it. I don't know. That's yeah. 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 yeah no, that's fair. That's fair. That's good. It's, I, I had no idea it was tied to to the book that we did in groups last year. So that's, that's cool. Okay. Last question. Describe fellowship in one word. Okay. I'm going to cheat. Um, Everybody I, does. I think, Go ahead. Yeah, I know. I, it, and I actually think that's a good thing. I think if, 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 if a church can be described really well in one word, that probably means that 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 hmm. something else is not happening there that that needs to be happening. So uh, there there are lots of things that that I would just use to describe fellowship. But the two that immediately come to mind, um, the first one is welcoming. Uh, I just think that uh, that uh, um, that the uh, that that fellowship does such a good job um, of just welcoming people in mm -hmm. um and and in a way that i've never seen it really focused on in any of the other churches you know the other mm -hmm. churches have been you know if, if someone uh someone comes through the door um people may be very friendly and that's a different thing than welcoming i think because yeah, yeah. because uh fellowship goes out of its way amy in particular um and her team to to know people's names to know people's faces to 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 mm -hmm. to, to follow up and and 
um, you know, even if it's someone who's only come through the door once to really try to, to, to make sure that, that their needs are being met. And that's the second thing is service. Um, you know, uh, again, in the churches that I grew up in, it's not that we were disconnected from the community, but a lot of times community work meant, you know, going door to door, knocking on, on doors and say, inviting people to church. You know, that, that was, that was yeah. community work. And the fact that, that, that here we, we we literally take Sundays off to go out and do things like rake leaves for elementary schools or, um, or, or clean up uh, uh, sort of uh, halfway homes or, or mm -hmm. those kinds of transition housing or, or working at rescues. Um, we've done all this stuff and I've had the, the, the chance to take my kids to do these kinds of things since yeah. being at fellowship. And that's, you know, th those two aspects, I think really get to the heart of, of what we are at fellowship. Um, the other word that I was going to use was uh, genuine, but Andrew sort of took that one uh, for me. In, in his. So I, <laughs> so, so welcoming and, and ser servant's heart. I think that's, that's what, uh, that's, that's really what stands out to me about fellowship and, and the, the people here. That's great. That's great. Well, Jared, thanks for your time. Uh, church, I hope this has been helpful for you and uh, to get to know Jared a little bit. Um, as you have heard at church, part of this process of elder, the elder nomination is you get to weigh in, let us know about your reputation. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can email elders at fellowshipashville.com and that goes to Jared Butner, uh, not this Jared, that would be odd. Uh, it goes to Jared Butner um, to, uh, he's the, the chairman of the elders, or you can email me, Fred at Fellowship Asheville, or you can email both of those uh, to make sure uh, your your words are, are seen. So so uh, other than that, if, if you haven't already, click like and subscribe on our YouTube channel so you'll get regular updates uh, when we post stuff like this. And um, Jared, thanks for your time. And I uh, hope y'all have a great day. Church, I love you and I love being in the church with you. Bye. Thank you.